When we say asymmetric darts, you can see that on this garment, the darts are not repeating on both sides the same way, and at the same time, they're parallel to each other. So based on this, could be designed, let's say this kind of design, or based on that concept, one can design this type of asymmetrical designs as well. You just need to understand one of them and you can do all of them based on that concept. In order for us to do asymmetric designs, we need to copy our block unfolded piece of paper because instead of just designing half of it and then placing unfolded fabric and cutting, we need to develop both sides of the pattern. Therefore, here I took a piece of paper where I folded my paper on one line of the dotted paper. And usually when I do this kind of designs, I need to staple my dotted paper so it will not shift and twist while I'm cutting it. A few staples will do. And then um, you're going to place your block right at the fold, like this. Now I have to tell you that in order for me to do this asymmetric design, I have to prepare my pattern. Preparation means, first of all, I'm going to move this waist dart into the armhole, necessarily on all designs they should go on in the armhole and then I'm going to slash and spread. So pretty much I'm going to use both of the techniques of dart manipulation here for this project. So first one will be pivoting the waist dart into the armhole and then we'll go from there and we will use slash and spread to um, finish the entire process. Here, as I said, I placed my bodice center front line at the fold and I marked the mid armhole where my dart is going to go and then I'm going to start tracing my block meanwhile I'm tracing I'm going to pivot okay so I'm starting from the dart leg that is closest to the center front and I start copying the block obviously no need to trace at the center front and continue and then we stop at the point where we need the dart to go to here we're going to mark the paper then come to the apex hold it in place pivot the dart meaning close the dart placing the second notch on top of the first notch then go back to the armhole, mark the paper one more time, which actually indicates the end of my dart, and then continue copying. And don't forget to mark the apex, apex properly. Now let's take a look. You see the waistline dart is closed and the armhole dart has opened. And we're going to connect the legs of this dart to the apex. And we can see that the dart is there. Now the next step is going to be cutting this pattern off of the dotted paper without adding any seam allowances or anything because we're not done yet. We still... Uh, develop this pattern and I'm going to cut out my dart remove the staples and open the pattern. Here's what we came up with. Now we're going to place our um, asymmetric darts 
on this pattern draft so then we can slash and spread. Here's what we do. One dart, one of the darts should come from up here, somewhere there, and it is going to go in slight curve line to the dart point, like that. The line has to connect to the dart point, otherwise it will not open, okay? Now, my other dart is going to start from somewhere here, and it is going to go to connect to the tip of the other dart. Can you see, I really like to draft these kind of lines free hand, with freehand drafting because I'm going to estimate if these lines are good or not. Right now, when I'm looking at my lines, I think they're looking pretty good. If they didn't look good, they're not parallel to each other or something, I would definitely erase, which will be much easier, and then draft another one that I like more. Uh, since I like my lines, what I do is I put my hip curve against those dot lines that I created here and I'm going to make one nice continuous smooth line. Most probably there is need that you switch the ruler. There is no specific way of doing that. Just simply place the ruler any way you think you're catching more of these um, lines and when you see that you are shifting away then flip it and finish the process like this as you can see i came up with my um darts here i am with this um unusual looking lines but can you see when we do slash and spread doesn't matter what kind of darts we are slashing and spreading the technique and the steps are exactly the same if you have any questions about that, you can look at the, the other videos to understand how to slash and spread, but I'm going to demonstrate it for you. So pretty much my intention is to close these darts and slash these two lines. Those are my slash lines. Okay, so I'm going to slash towards the tips of the darts and when I get closer to the dart point try not to cut through and here I slash them take a look so my pattern looked like this once I close this dart and tape it, you see that dart opened in here. Huge dart opened in here. One thing that we should understand is even the dart is looking huge, it has the same value as the previous dart. And then my second dart is closed and uh, like this, tape it closed. Here's what happened to my pattern. Okay, so my darts are curvy, also they're very big. Now what I have to do is to put this on another piece of paper and finalize my darts, dart points, and then add massive allowances and I will be done. As you can see here, I am done with the pattern. Um, and if you look at the dart points closely, I made my dart points going back from the apex for one inch. So to start with, this was my apex and this was my apex, okay? Now, both dart points are pulled back for one inch. Here's how I did it. I measured one inch from the point, placed the dot equally away from the dart legs and then with my um, hip curve, I drafted my curvy dart points and blend it with a dart leg. And then I would go down here like this. And then I bring my ruler down to the lower dart leg of my dart and from the dart point, blend my dart leg to my 
darts down here. So obviously after I'm done with my dart point, I will go half an inch down from this. Again, this, my punch hole is half an inch down from the dart point. So this is my dart point. And that's my punch hole. Okay, the same is done with my uh, second dart. And as you can see here, I have added my seam allowances everywhere on my pattern. As usual, we um, add quarter inch seam allowance at the neckline, half an inch at the shoulder, half an inch at the armhole. Um, since we're planning to stitch a sleeve to this garment and then um, half an inch side seam and then my dart legs are cut into half inch seam allowances while my waistline is half an inch also and the same thing on the opposite side. After I've done that, now notching. Um, so the center front neckline is always notched because this is a very important position where we connect facings, collars, so we notch. Now, the shoulder tips are notched to show the amount of the seam allowance here at the shoulder. Of, at the armhole, we have a notch. This is a gui a guiding to connect the sleeve in the place properly. This is my side seam notch. The other up notch is at the bottom, like that, facing upwards. Now, my dart looks kind of very unusual. But again, my dart legs are dart legs. I have to notch them and I notch them here. And coming down here, the waistline center where the, the center waistline should be definitely notched because we connect like peplum skirts um, to this point and we definitely know, want to know where the center position is. And then accordingly, my side seam notch notches, armhole, dart legs, and the shoulder notch. Now, um, the grain line is going to connect from the center front, neckline to the center front at the waist. That is my grain line, meaning that's the direction that I'm going to cut my fabric to. And definitely I should not forget my label and my pattern is done. I just folded my darts and taped them to just show you what I came up with. Also, um, I wanted to uh, show you something else. Can you see since my dart legs are very long and they're curvy lines, there's a possibility that when I stitch these darts, I might stretch the fabric. So I might add extra notches somewhere in the middle of that dart and somewhere in the middle of this dart. You can walk it. You don't need to fold the darts just like I did, I'm just uh, doing this to show you how that becomes a three-dimensional three garment and how it looks. And then, um, as you can see here, when I folded my dart, my the tip of my paper is sticking out. I will shave that off. And in a minute, I'm gonna place this on the, on the dress form so you can see what I came up with. Okay, so this is the look of the pattern that I just finished. And you can see my draw darts are parallel to each other and the shape of the front bodice 
is looking like the fit of the garment looks the same as if I was using just my waistline dart. So that means I didn't lose anything, I didn't add anything to my pattern. So this will conclude my demonstration for you of asymmetric darts.